it's time to take a look at olefin metathesis. Now, olefin is just an old fashioned word for alkene that's still often used in, in industry. Um, and so this is a metathesis reaction that involves alkenes. And metathesis simply means uh, uh, partner sharing or rearranging between partners. So for instance, here we've got these two alkenes coming into the scheme. And what we're doing is we are ripping these alkenes apart at the middle, and then we're putting them back together the different way around. Okay, so here we've, we've taken the, the smaller pieces and put them together and the larger pieces and put them together. Okay, um, or similarly, Um, here we might bring in this ethene, split it in two pieces, put this longer alkene in two pieces, and put those pieces back together a different way. That's all of them we take this as. Now these reactions, as you can see here, are equilibrium reactions, so they can go either way. So one of the ways that they might be controlled is through Le Chatelier's principle. So for instance, if in the first reaction, if we essentially distill away this smaller, lighter olefin, which should have a much lower boiling point, we can shift the reaction towards the right. Or in the second reaction, if we wanted to go to from left to right, we might increase the amount of ethene in here. So do this reaction under high pressure of ethene and shift the reaction to the right. Okay, so this is a reaction that is um, under equilibrium, and so you can employ various approaches to push the equilibrium the direction that you want. Now, in addition to these sort of straight chain um, mixing and matching metatheses, um, there are other useful variations, such as a ring closing metathesis. And in a ring closing metathesis, we've got an alkene that has two double bonds in it. Uh, and we're just wrapping this around itself to form a new alkene and extruding. Ethene. Uh, ethene. Um, again, this is something that can be driven to the right by distilling away or just allowing that ethene to evaporate. Um, and ring closing metathesis is, is, in fact, a very efficient way of making large rings. It's very important in uh, synthesis of pharmaceuticals, for instance. Um, finally, uh, ring open metathesis polymerization is essentially going the opposite direction. We've got a ring already and we're opening it up. Uh, but this time um, we are just having this alkene react with other alkenes. And if we break this alkene in the middle and we break this alkene in the middle and we have these two ends connect to each other and connect to another one over here and so on, we get a polymerization reaction. Uh, so ring opening takes this polymerization is another variation on olefin metathesis. So how does this work? Um, here's the catalytic cycle, um, and it involves four different kinds of steps that are just repeated over and over. Um, now, anytime we do catalysis, the first thing we're doing is bringing things together. And so in this case, we're bringing the alkene together with the catalyst. And the catalyst is uh, an alkylidine. Um, that's this carbon double bond metal species. So it's like an alkene, we've got hydrocarbon on one end, but the other end, instead of being hydrocarbon, it's a metal atom, so a double bond between carbon to the metal. And when we take an alkylidine and we bind an alkene to it, the alkene and the alkylidine can undergo a two plus two cycle of addition. Okay, and so that's what we have here. We have the product of a two plus two cycle of addition. Um, and that's also reversible. So it can go back where it came from. Or if we simply split that cyclobutadiene a different way when we do the retro two plus two addition, we'll get a new alkene, we'll produce ethene which can then be lost. So now we have a new metal alkylidine, it can add a new alkene, 
we get a new uh, metallocyclobutane. And again, if that comes apart in a different way than, than it came together, it's going to form a new alkene here. Right? So we've gone through the sequence of associating a new 2 plus 2 addition, retro 2 plus 2 addition, and dissociation of, of alkene. That's how the reaction works. Um, we'll talk in class a little bit about how we know how the reaction works, what the mechanistic evidence is. Now, what are these catalysts that undergo the reaction, that, that carry out the reaction? So there are two basic families of catalysts that are used. They're Schrock catalysts and Grubbs catalysts, and they have different uses. Um, they can both do all of those kinds of uh, metatheses that I showed you before. Uh, ring closing metatheses, uh, polymerizations, just regular alkene metatheses. Um, but the advantages of each are um, come up in different, different ways. So the Schrock catalyst, it turns out, is very, very fast. The reaction is much faster than with the Grubbs catalyst. And so this catalyst is typically used for polymerizations. And the reason it's used for polymerizations is that in a polymerization, if you're taking, say, a thousand alkene rings and tying them all together, then you've got to do this reaction a thousand times. And so you want something that's really fast if that's going to happen in any reasonable amount of time. So the faster Schrock catalyst is typically used for polymerizations. Now its, its drawback is that it's much more sensitive to things like air and moisture, and even sensitive to other functional groups within the substrate molecule. So Grubbs catalyst is often used for um, reactions in which there are other functional groups in the alkene. So if you were making a pharmaceutical, and it has a bunch of esters and amines and so on. And you can't use the Schrock catalyst very easily, but you can use a Grubbs catalyst. And even though it's a little bit slower, it's worth it for the relatively expensive uh, products that you're making. 